Tyler, a lot of people seem to be worried that the robots are coming. Siri, Cortana, artificial intelligence, Watson, they're going to take our jobs. So, do you think robots, are they going to take our jobs? And if they did, would that be a bad thing? I've written on this topic, and let me tell you, I'm worried for at least three reasons. First, machines are encroaching on human intelligence much more than ever before. It's not just brute physical labor. So machines now can do medical diagnosis or legal research or even write articles of journalism. Second, we've heard all these stories before, as early as 1753. That was brute people physical were labor, and people took jobs with more intelligence. Now the intelligence is being competed away, and what have we got left? Our beauty and charm? It's not going to get us that far. But second reason, you look at the data, labor force participation in the United States has been going down for decades. So we see in the data this is an actual problem. Third issue, today we have more welfare and transfer payments than ever before, so labor reallocates much more slowly. What we see is a lot of people lose their jobs and they simply stay out of work. Labor force participation, you say it's down. It's down mildly for some men. It's huge uply for women. Women have entered the labor force in incredible numbers. So I don't see this as a big trend caused by uh, robots. I see this as societal change. There's a big one-time increase of women in the labor force due to the birth control pill and women's liberation. But even since then, women have been slightly cutting back their participation in the workforce. You look at elderly people who used to work all the time. Now they collect a kind of guaranteed annual income. Those jobs are done by machines. This is not an apocalyptic scenario, but it's a slow trickling away of a lot of the jobs which make our lives meaningful. Every time we see unemployment goes up, we, we hear these fears. We just had the Great Recession, and so people are all concerned about these fears. During the Great Depression, unemployment went up. Even people like Einstein said, oh, it's technology. Technology is taking our jobs. And yet what we actually know is that the problems of the Great Depression had a lot more to do with monetary policy than they did with technology. And I think the same thing is going to be true today. Today really is different. So Tyler, are you worried about the Terminator scenario? That not only are the robots going to take our jobs, they're also going to take our lives? No, the cash registers are not going to be telling us what to do, but they're getting more impressive very rapidly. So computers can beat us at chess, now they can beat us at the game of Go, and next in line are the professions of law, medicine, and, dare I say it, academic teaching. That's not even necessarily a problem. I think people have the wrong idea. They see that smart people have higher wages, and they think, oh, computers are getting smarter, and they're getting more prevalent, therefore the computers are going to take all the wages. But in fact, what economics says is not that smart people have high wages. Economics says that wages are determined by supply and demand. And everything we know about computers is that the supply is huge. That's pushing down prices. That's making software cheaper. So we could easily have a situation where the really smart computer tells the maybe not so smart human what to do, and the human earns all of the wages. Again, let's look at the data. What we see over the last 20 to 30 years in most Western countries is a higher share of the income going to capital and a lower share going to labor, right? So there is a problem. Wages have been stagnating. You have prime age working males out of the labor force at higher rates than in a long time. When you look at what's actually happening, it seems the net effect is fewer people working. You can talk about the technology. great stagnation all you want. But look. It's called the, talking about the data all I want. <laughs> OK, let's talk more about the numbers. The numbers. Why, if capital is becoming so much more important, why aren't interest rates going up? People should be demanding lots of capital. There, but in fact, what we see around the world is a savings glut. Capital seems to be everywhere. Here's a simple way of thinking about it. It's really smart labor and smart capital versus passive labor and passive capital. So both smart labor and smart capital, they're earning much more. Look at Apple. It's an incredibly profitable company, even though other places have copied their smartphones, right? Now, smart labor and smart capital, how much of the world is that? 10%? Maybe, at most. So yes, there are huge gains. They're being captured in a pretty concentrated fashion, and still, a lot of people ought to be worried. I don't see that the gains are being captured at all. Sure, Apple has made a lot of uh, profit, but if you look at cell phones, some five or six billion people today have a smartphone. 
That's incredible. A smartphone is more powerful than a Cray 2 supercomputer of the 1990s. So if anything, what we're seeing is that this technology is incredibly widespread and easily available and cheap. And the gains are going to people, not to the robots. Smartphones, they're great, I have one too. But when you measure gains in real wages, and you add in and count the value of smartphones, real wages are barely up for decades. That's part of the problem. And part of the culprit is machines, automation, information technology, and also in some cases trade with other nations. I think we all agree that capital can substitute for labor. But there's a substitution effect and there's an income effect. So, for example, Jim Besson has shown that, look at the ATM machines. You would have thought that the ATM machines would have unemployed all of the bank tellers. But in fact, that didn't happen. Well, why not? Well, at any individual bank, an ATM machine substituted for a bank teller, but that made it cheaper to produce more bank branches. And with more branches, there was actually hiring of more bank tellers. But the last few years, bank teller employment finally has gone down, and banks are closing their branches. The branch I used to go to on a Saturday, it's shuttered. Why? It's machines. Look, it's not just about bank tellers. That's just an example. The bigger point is that these technologies make us rich. And when people get rich, they spend more. And when they spend more, you get entirely new jobs. Look, the jobs of today were unheard of even 10 years ago. Think about all of the people writing apps for those smartphones that we have. Those jobs were unheard of before. There'll be new jobs in the future that you and I can't even imagine today. People, 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 you talk about people. It will make some people rich. It will make smart people rich. It will make owners of intellectual property rich. It will help people in poorer countries catch up to wealthier countries. And all that's fine, but most middle class Americans are not seeing real wage gains. So Tyler, I'm shocked. What should we do then? Should we smash the robots? I don't see you smashing your smartphone. We don't have to smash the robots. There's probably no solution. What we need to do is learn how to adapt. Here's a way to think about it. The Industrial Revolution, we had manufacturing replace agriculture, starting in the middle of the 18th century. The amazing thing is today, we're still subsidizing farmers. Think how long that process of adjustment took. So what we're going to see is another equally traumatic process of adjustment. We need to hold on and be ready for it and understand what's coming rather than deny it. If anything, it. the shift from agriculture to manufacturing shows precisely how beneficial these disruptions can be. Yes, there were disruptions, but people got new jobs, they got higher paying jobs, they got better jobs. We saw again in the shift from manufacturing to services. People got new jobs, they got better jobs. After all, we, we look back today and we think, oh, how great it was to be an auto worker on the assembly line, 10 hours a day with dirt and oil and, and hard work, and how terrible it is to be an office worker. No, it's actually much nicer to be an office worker today. And the future, I think, we'll see better jobs and we'll see nicer jobs and higher paying jobs as well. You say the jobs will make us rich, but that us, it's a tricky concept. I would say jobs will make rich people who are really good at working with information technology. And that's actually a pretty demanding cognitive requirement. You need a lot of education. You also need to be able to retrain yourself because the technology changes quickly. That's not most people. For most people, information technology means that labor competes against other labor and other parts of the world more than ever before. And those others out there, they're not so much better off. Look, we agree education is important and retraining is important, but don't forget that these technologies also help people to do precisely that. Online education makes education more productive. And who knows what we're going to see in the future with genetic engineering, uh, smart drugs, biological enhancements. We're already tied to our cell phones. We're practically cyborgs already. I don't see why we can't even extend that even further. Dreams, dreams, dreams. Someday, perhaps. But look at education. High school graduation rates in this country, they're pretty flat. Test scores, they're pretty flat. Maybe they're up a bit. It's hardly an impressive performance. What I see is that working with smart machines is so hard that most people don't really even try to do it. They sit back, they earn what they can, that's it, and there's a lot of stagnation in the that's economy. What do you think? If you'd like to hear more from Tyler, click to find out how economics can help you find a good job in a market filled with computers and robots. Or, if you'd like to see previous episodes of EconDuel, check out our playlist. <laughs>